Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I want to talk about Elias Theodoru because recently it was announced that he passed away after battling with stage 4 liver cancer. And this was a shock to not only myself, but a lot of people because he wasn't very public about this battle. And sadly, at the age of 34, he is no longer with us. So yeah, this was a huge shock, especially when you consider that his last fight wasn't even a year ago. And this is what I wanted to talk about in this video today. As Aside from his impact on the sport, I also want to talk about his impact on me because Elias was the first UFC fighter I ever interviewed. And this was at a time when the channel only had like a few hundred subscribers. I was starting off and it was really demotivating to put in a lot of work and not really see any growth. At that point, one of my biggest goals was to interview an MMA fighter. It didn't even have to be someone from the UFC. But of course, I'm DMing all these fighters in the UFC to ask for an interview. Some read it and didn't reply. Some didn't even open it at all. But Elias Theodoru replied saying, sure, I'm down. That night was one of the most amazing nights for me because I didn't ever think I'd get to a point where I'd interview a UFC fighter. I was telling all my friends and family I was excited. I had hope in this as a job for myself. And that started because of Elias. He made me feel like I belonged in this and I was very nervous for it. I wrote a bunch of questions down, practiced them a bunch before we finally had our Zoom interview. And I still have the interview. It's just that I actually took it down because I was so not impressed with how I conducted the interview. I thought it was not professional. Looking back at it now, it's not as bad. But at the time, I was just not happy with myself, mostly because of how nervous I was. But even throughout that, I feel like Elias did such a good job in making me feel comfortable and not even making it an interview at that point, but more so a conversation. But but basically what he was talking about was his career at that point heading into the Derek Brunson fight, his activism of cannabis use in MMA, which led to him becoming the first fighter in North America to receive a therapeutic use exemption. And honestly, he was one of the first fighters to be talking about this. I know the Diaz brothers are the one to bring that topic to the masses, but Elias was advocating for it long before. And even in the interview, I had no idea what he was talking about and looking back at it. I'm like, damn, what you did with this therapeutic use exemption has paved a huge path for fighters today. Because now you have more fighters today being open about cannabis use in MMA. But Elias was doing it at a time where the stigma was strong and it wasn't widely accepted. We also spoke about him becoming a ring boy for Invicta fights, making him the first ring boy ever. And although it was a funny thing when that news came out originally, his reason for doing it was to bring equality for a position as such because Elias wanted to bring to light that the ring girl job or ring boy job was important because it gave them a platform to do other things in life. And that's the thing. He had the confidence to do this because like I said, people were obviously making jokes about it originally. But when you actually hear the reason as to why he did it, it's like, man, you didn't really care what people were thinking of you. You just wanted to do good. But yeah, that was the main points of the interview. And like I said, overall, it didn't even feel like an interview by the end. It just felt like a good conversation. So at the time, that was massive for me. And it gave me a lot of confidence to keep going. And although for Elias, things didn't go well for him after that, since he lost that fight to Derek Brunson. And then after one defeat, the UFC released him. And in my opinion, that was one of the most unfair cuts that the UFC ever made. And it sucks because Elias was a great fighter. He finished his career with a 19 and 3 record, 8 and 3 in the UFC. And yes, he did face criticism at times due to his style of fighting not being the most entertaining. But overall, we have a bunch of guys doing that today. But the difference is that these guys are also doing things outside of the cage in order to bring that attention. Elias never seemed like that type. I don't think he was ever going to try to fake something in order to bring attention on himself. He just wanted to fight and do what he normally did. And sadly, that's not what the UFC wanted, which is a shame because even after the UFC, he was still doing very good as a fighter. But overall, he should be proud of what he accomplished, not just as an MMA fighter, but also as a person. He was a genuine guy. And although I've only spoken to him for 20 minutes, those 20 minutes were huge on my life. And I'm forever grateful that he gave me that time. And all I want to say to end this off is rest in peace to Elias Theodoru and my condolences to his family and friends.